to another episode of Inside RMC. I'm Pastor Daniel. I'm sitting in place of Pastor Eric as he has a uh, kind of losing his voice today. So Ooh. I get the privilege of sitting in this recording. Super fun to do. I'm with Pastor Tim Balaga and Pastor Tyler Kettner. They're our youth pastors here at Rocky Mountain. A super uh, joy and treasure to work with these guys. Super fun. We have a uh, the laughter comes from youth ministry area of the building a lot. And so super excited to get a, a chance to talk. Um, guys, why don't you uh, take a moment, introduce yourself, tell us how you got here, tell us a little bit about your heart for your ministry. Tyler, would you start? Yeah, so uh, my name's Tyler Kettner, and uh, this is uh, I'm going on my third year here at Rocky Mountain Calvary, and I've been in the youth the last six years or so. But really, kind of what got a hold of my heart, I actually grew up going to Rocky Mountain Calvary, um, actually under uh, Pastor Wes Shane. He was my uh, junior high pastor at the time. And as I grew up, I didn't really have a very close relationship with the Lord. Um, it was more of a, hey, I'll keep you here on the side while I do my own thing. And so I kind of just pursued sports uh, for the majority of my early life and thought I was going to go play hockey, really wanted to take that as far as I could. And then I got injured and I was pretty stubborn. I should have taken that as, hey, God's trying to get your attention. But instead, I decided to become an athletic trainer, went through that process. It was absolutely miserable. And God actually showed me through someone loving on my wife and caring for her, um, a lady named Tammy, when we lived in St. Louis, in a way that I never had, that just what godly love was, what that love of Christ was. And I was like, man, I'm missing this. It wasn't that no one had given it to me before, mm. but I was missing it. And God used my idolatry of sports, kind of crushed that out of me for me to realize that what I really needed was him. Huh. And so I got cool. saved on the way to a Bible study. Uh, Tammy was in the back seat, and she, she just asked me, Tyler, when was that <laughs> moment that you knew yeah. that you were saved? And I couldn't think of anything. And I was like, well, I guess it's right now. That's cool. And so it was kind of crazy. I was just driving a car, but I'll remember that moment for the rest of my life. And Man. Um, God brought me back to Colorado. I'm very introverted at heart. Uh, I actually don't like talking to people, but <laughs> hey, it's just what I have to do now. And I yep. uh, started working as a recruiter because I needed a job when I came back and I just wanted to follow the Lord. Went through School of Discipleship here at Rocky Mountain Calvary and then um, served in the youth. And they just, they took my heart and I just fell in love with them. And uh, we just have such yeah. awesome youth here. And there's so much fun to get to pick on and to, I'm just kidding. I uh, get to love yeah. on and, and just hang out with, but, and I got to put up with this guy now, but, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of how I came uh, to Rocky mountain Calvary and just uh, my passion for the youth is just really seeing their need to recognize a savior and make their faith their own. Awesome. That's cool. Uh, Tyler, can you share with Dan, uh, what Tammy told you, uh, what you what you oh. saw for your future <laughs> yeah so as we uh i made the decision to quit my job in st louis as an athletic trainer for a d1 women's ice hockey team and a d2 men's team made the decision to quit that and i was like all right i'm just gonna see what god has for me we're mm -hmm. gonna move back to colorado had no idea what i was gonna do and like the day that we're getting ready to drive back across the country tammy looked at me and she said you're gonna teach people and I laughed at her. I said, I, no, I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's funny. That sounds horrible. I'm not doing that. Oh. And she was right. A yeah. word of knowledge yeah. spoken over yeah, you. Yeah, God definitely used her in a Super pretty cool, cool way. So I was, yeah. 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 Here you are. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, for me, I was, uh, I've been coming to RMC since about 2002. And I started coming to RMC because I wanted to come to a church that was close for my kids to be able to come. So and you're celebrating 20 years of coming to RMC this yeah, year. Yeah, I never really thought about it, yeah. Awesome. But yeah, I was coming here, kind of just uh, wanted to sneak in the back of the room and kind of just listen to worship and sneak out. And then uh, like, you know, like this cup in front of me, found out they serve coffee. <laughs> and I decided, oh, well, I'm gonna go in a little bit earlier and get some coffee. And uh, then all of a sudden, uh, People started asking me where I came from and what was I doing here at church and what was what you know what I where I'd come from and what other church I had gone to, and um, 
Hmm. Uh, some of the people that were coming here knew me from a Bible study that I was leading at another church, and they started talking to other pastors and saying, yeah, this guy's been teaching the Bible. This guy uh, cool. has been doing, has been uh, working at other churches. So then all of a sudden they started asking me, like, uh, why the question about why, why am I not serving in this church? And hmm. I kind of ran away from that for a while. And then I started to serve junior high, was a junior high volunteer for about six years. And then uh, I was getting ready to go to Mexico on uh, a mission. And then all of a sudden they asked me to step in and be the junior high pastor. So I was a junior high pastor cool. for five years and then the high school pastors going on two mm -hmm. years now. So well, what yeah. really happened because you, you're not saying the whole truth here is <laughs> you were about to be a missionary and you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Missions department <clears throat> had all kinds of plans. And then they stole you from the missions department. That's what yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, <laughs> you were the missions pastor at that time, so you would yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was. Yeah, uh, I was like, wait, hold on. Hold yeah. Hold on. yeah. All right. Yeah. You know, but I didn't expect That's to cool. become a youth pastor. I expected yeah. mm -hmm. to just go down and do mission work. But God really showed me, like, uh, just like Tyler, like that he needed to do some work in me. Yeah. He needed to do work here at home. He needed to prepare me. Uh, to teach the Bible and just to uh, uh, do his work here first before I could be prepared to go out on a mission. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and you know, that mission door may open one day, maybe God wants that. Yeah. But you know what, the <laughs> truth is, we all should have this tension to go on mission. We should all have a missionary mm -hmm. heart anyway. And you've always had that, it comes across in your teaching. Uh, you're really good at mobilizing the kids and, and getting them. <laughs> I think that's that coach in me yeah. that always wants to get mm -hmm. the kids to go forward. That's true. You know. Yeah, not just sit. No yeah. stagnancy here. Let's yeah. keep moving. You know, rub some dirt on it and get out there. Yeah, it's been fun to watch. Yeah. Well, both of you guys have such a heart for youth. And I know, okay, guys, in ministry, pastoral ministry, um, we need some wins, if you will. We need some God stories mm -hmm. to keep us going in our ministry at times uh, when when we feel like where you know where's the fruit of of all this labor mm -hmm. and uh, the church needs to hear and celebrate some God stories you know what is God doing in the youth ministry and that, would you guys just take a minute and share kind of a, a recent story of God mm -hmm. you know impacting someone's life yeah absolutely so I guess I can start off um so I, when I was still a volunteer before I'd actually moved into the uh, pastoral role, um, I was mentoring a, a young man. He was a sixth grader. Um, and I remember sitting down with him. He said he wanted to be mentored. And it was like pulling teeth yeah. sitting with him. I'd be like, hey, what's on your heart? Like, yeah. how are you doing? And then it would just be silence. Yeah. And we just kept meeting, kept getting together. I remember one time I asked him to pray for us. And we sat there for about five minutes um, silence can be really yeah. powerful with the youth uh, yeah. and really yeah. awkward at the same time, but you just got to push through the awkwardness for it mm. um, and just allow them to kind of make that decision. And he didn't know how to pray. Yeah. He had never really done it before. He's like, well, I've prayed in my head. Um, I prayed with my family, but he had never really vocalized it um, or had kind of that connection with the Lord. He had just mm. heard others pray or had others pray for him. And what was really cool is he's now an eighth grader. And not only is he now praying, but I actually, he went through one of our uh, student leader programs. And one of the assignments that the uh, eighth graders have is they have to actually be able to uh, teach um, their entire student leadership group. Hmm. And a couple of them did such a good job that I actually invited them to teach the entire junior high. And one of them was this young man. And I said, hey, if you want to, let me know. It's not a requirement, but just let me know if you want to. And he came to me about two weeks later and said, hey, Tyler, can I, can I teach them? And what was so cool is seeing someone just grow, not because of anything I did, but just because they desired to pursue the Lord and God really worked in his life, gave him the words. And I have a video on my phone of him teaching uh, about a five, six minute lesson to the entire junior high. Hmm. And Pretty it cool. was just so cool to see like, at his age, um, God is using him. Yeah. 
and for getting this youth to understand that. And mm -hmm. there's other stories as well, just students coming forward, but that's one that really just sticks out in my head as, man, this yeah. was a huge win to see how God is propelling this young man forward. Yeah, when you get to see the youth take that first step or when you get to see them come out of their shell, it's huge, you know. I had a, a young lady that, uh, that was never really one of the people that you would look to to lead or to be a leader and uh, all of a sudden uh, you know she went through the student leadership and started uh, seeing that God wanted to use her and just God wanted to uh, bring her to a new place and as I saw her grow and now she's in high school and I've seen her progress and now she's uh, part of the AV team that's here uh, filming us today and just yeah. seeing her grow in a mighty way knowing that like God wanted to use her all along, mm -hmm. but like she, mm -hmm. she was, she was in a shell she had made for herself and it started slowly, but, but to see her each year become more and more comfortable with who she mm -hmm. is and who God's made her and how God wants to use her. I get to see it every week and get to see her just uh, grow and, uh, and be the person that God wants <laughs> her awesome. to be. It's awesome. Yeah. So you get to see and walk in kind of a harvest. You've been doing this long enough to, to see the, the life impact and the change. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you guys are, you know, Pastor Eric is known to say this even, you know, that if you want to go to the front lines of where the enemy's at work, mm -hmm. where the world is at work, the, you know, and where the Holy Spirit is at war with the enemy, go to the youth ministry. Yeah. And never... At, unprecedented times to be a youth pastor right now with all the confusion in the world the many different voices on truth mm -hmm. and love and all those challenges so you guys um i want the church to actually just kind of appreciate this is how i pray for the youth pastors mm -hmm. you know it's more it's it's praying on a spiritual mm -hmm. level it's praying against the enemy against the evil one strongholds you know i think of jeremiah's calling mm -hmm. that's the calling you guys have to tear down to you know to plant mm -hmm. um tell us about the darkness and and the yeah. things challenges youth are facing yeah well it's actually funny you mentioned jeremiah that's actually kind of the junior high's vision for the youth is jeremiah 1 5 tells us that mm -hmm. before i formed you in the womb i knew you mm -hmm. before you were born i sanctified you i ordained you a prophet to the nations mm -hmm. this is the calling on jeremiah's life where reaching out to him jeremiah is a youth he's young and he's given a mission yeah. to go into a rejecting culture of the lord and what's interesting is during his life no one actually gets saved from jeremiah's words mm -hmm. But it said God chose him for this, and now we're reading his words today, and the impact is massive, and the harvest is huge. Mm -hmm. But Jeremiah's initial response is, in verse 6, says, Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. And then God says back to him, But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. And what we see here is really... The youth need to understand that they're made in the image of God, that That's he right. knew them before they were in their mother's womb, and their plan for their life is perfect and unique for them, and their identity should be in the Lord. It's not them that's doing the work or speaking. It's God in them. Yeah. But what they're faced with today is just such a darkness of this culture of, well, you can choose your own identity. You can choose your own gender. You can choose who it is that you love. And they're facing this battle of people telling them that it's better for them to live outside of the image of God than to follow his plans for them. Right. And the problem is not rejecting those that do, but the problem hmm. is that when we live outside of the image of God, there's no fulfillment. Right. Because God, like Jesus tells, them, tells us in uh, the New Testament in John, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And if we're living apart from him, we don't have any of that. All we have is ourself, and we're not sufficient of ourselves, mm. and it leaves us in emptiness. And so some of what we're seeing is they're turning to social media for their attention. Their cell phones are a big problem. Right. They get instant gratification. They can look up anything they want to. Their opinion is valid online where they can hide behind a screen. Mm. And not that they want to do that, but they want to be heard and known um, and they want to know that they have a call in their life. And as a church, if we're not giving them opportunity to lead or to grow or to disciple them and have them disciple others, we're really failing them in that. 
Yeah. And so this is a big burden that we have is they're looking for a mission. They're looking to be a part of something. Yeah. And if they're not part of the church, if they're not part of us, if they're not part of Christ, then they're going to be part of anything else. And they're really what shapes the generation to come. Yeah. So one of the combatants then is, is exactly from Jeremiah. I mean, how precious are these youth when God had a plan for them Mm -hmm. before he formed them? Like the joy he had in forming them, knowing his plan for them. Mm -hmm. And that's purpose. Yeah. And there are the, a huge issue, a huge struggle is purposelessness, Mm -hmm. you know, within the, like what they don't have it. It's interesting. Statistically, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. If you um, look at those living within the poverty line, Mm -hmm. the suicide rate for children living within the poverty line is much less than those Mm -hmm. living in affluence. Mm -hmm. And they've tracked down one of the main purposes behind that is, is that when you're in poverty, everyone in your family depends on you. Mm -hmm. You have a purpose in your family. Like you're you're there to help. You're there to come behind your single mom who's got one job. You're Mm -hmm. there to make sure the, your younger siblings are taken care of. Taken care of. And there's purpose. Yeah. The power of, of purpose in that is pretty amazing. Well, I think also, too, I think the church as a whole, um, we've kind of lost our way a little bit. Because uh, if you look at Matthew 28, where it says in verse 19 that we're supposed to go, therefore, and make disciples, mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, that's our mission. You, even here at RMC, we say be, make, send. But sometimes mm-hmm. we're good at coming to church or we're good at uh going to Bible study, mm-hmm. we're good at, uh, you know, maybe giving our tithe and, and uh, showing up to help. But like, I, I, I think we kind of lost like looking around ourselves and saying, where are our disciples? Mm-hmm. Where are the right. people that we're leading that from mm. the last generation forward? Right. Right? And I think discipleship has kind of got pushed to the side. And I think we need to uh, almost push back as a mm. youth. Yeah as a youth ministry to say, hey, we need you to come and disciple. Yeah. I mm-hmm. think the people in our church, the people that are that are doing a lot of the uh, discipling are people that are in our ministries now, but we need everyone to do mm-hmm. discipleship. We yeah. need that discipleship to be a constant thing that is done over and over and over again, not something that's mm-hmm. uh, just kept to a program. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, we we have plenty of people that bring their kids and we're doing the ministering. Yep. We're doing the leading. But like as soon as they leave, where does that mini- right. does that ministry continue? Right. Yeah. Is that discipleship continuing? Yeah. And who waters those seeds you're planting? And yeah. And that's a, a major issue that we have is that the child will have the desire to be discipled. But if it doesn't carry over at home or if they're not having more than just their youth pastor disciple them, that's not doing them justice. Right. And they need that. They it's need people God's to design. come inside. Yeah. It's it not. has to be. Mm-hmm. You are a compliment. I did, mm-hmm. God's design would be youth pastors. Well, great. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have them. But you're just to compliment what the family's doing. Yeah. Right. And, and also what the church is doing, because I think... Mm. A lot of people, I mean, you know, we have a very large congregation, but we have, uh, if you compare our congregation to our youth group, and then you take that youth group and you say, how many of those kids are being discipled? The number is so few, it's scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Yes. It's scary to know that the only the ones that are going to be discipled, the ones that are going are are, that we're preparing to carry the word Mm -hmm. forward, that that number is so small. It's like. How, how much of an effect can they have? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's what <laughs> to put a, a phrase to it, it, you're kind of set up for failure at the end of the day, because the uh, the main tool you need mm-hmm. is the parents mm-hmm. and the family. Uh, they're the, the reason and the brokenness of the family. Yeah. So youth today are seeing that they're seeing the brokenness of the family. You and I as pastors, we're seeing the cost of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we cry out to the church, you can, su- you can supplement the missing mom and dad relationship, mm-hmm. that mentoring. You can get involved. Mm-hmm. You can. Yep. God, God will use you yeah. in that way. Yeah. And um, I can give a, an example of that specifically. I've had a, uh, 
a kid that I've been mentoring and discipling for the past five years now. And he, he does have a little bit rougher of a background um, and he'll fall in and out of sin. But the thing that he always comes back to is he'll always give me a call. Yeah. He might disappear. He might fall off. Um, he might struggle, but he'll always reach back out to me. And part of it is he doesn't have his parents in his life. Yeah. Um, he was raised in a non-typical, um, a non-nuclear home. Yeah. Um, but just having that person that he can go to, mm. he still reaches out to me. And sometimes I'm like, man, I haven't heard from him in a while. I hope he's doing well. And then it'll surprise me. I'll get a message from him one night asking if he can meet, if he can call. And that impact is really just long lasting. And it's important because even in a broken family that's lacking a true mom or dad, or maybe they have parents who are not following the Lord, mm. that's where um, others in the church can make up that gap. Um, I think of uh, a man in our congregation, he loves to take people fishing, and he takes youth fishing with me sometimes. Yeah. And just the impact it has on them that someone cares about them enough to tell them about Christ. I think, you know, having that in the in children when they face storms of life they're not like us adults they, mm -hmm. we usually have an answer or a direction to run or mm -hmm. something to go to the children have nothing mm -hmm. and when that storm and they're faced with a storm in their life they're looking for that rock to cling on yeah so mentoring and decide be, be, uh, uh, someone that is discipling another mm -hmm. uh, youth is like that their that's their rock yeah. And we have a lot of kids that come to church that their parents don't really participate in church right. mm -hmm. or they're, or they come by themselves. And then, you know, we only hear about, we only talk to them when there's a situation going on or a problem. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. And so having that rock, that steady thing to grab onto, you know, we have Jesus, he is the rock, mm. but the students need to learn that Jesus is that rock that we're yeah. holding on to right. that we could reach out from to pull them mm -hmm. onto, yeah. you know, in the storms. So just to summarize then what I'm really hearing from you guys, and it's, it's wild to watch pastors walk through seasons of difficulty, seasons where of refreshing mm -hmm. and all these, um, but the challenge that you guys just can't live up to Re just requires more people to step in and love these kids mm -hmm. and pour into them. Mm -hmm. And that is the greatest need you have in your ministry. Yeah. Would that be? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what famous person said it or who said it, but they <laughs> said to capture a nation's heart is to capture the generation. Yeah. Correct. And Correct. whoever, whoever said that, uh, he knew what he was talking mm -hmm. about yeah. because, uh, the world has captured the generation's heart right mm -hmm. now, and we need to recapture that and yeah. go after them. Yeah. And they're hungry for it too. Um, like I have a youth who came in over the weekend. Her parents don't take her. They don't want mm -hmm. her coming to church, and she chooses to be here, and she finds a way to come all on her own. And she's a seventh grader, mm -hmm. and she found someone that's willing to take her, and it's like that passion is there. And if we can come along and kindle it and really just help out, like God really has those deep, intimate, awesome plans yeah. for their life, and he'll use them in a powerful way. And so often we dismiss the youth. Um, I've mm -hmm. heard parents of students that I have now, they're like, oh, they're too young. They can't do this. It's like, no, yeah. they're the perfect one to do it. Yeah. Because when I look and I see, like, I think about my own son, he, he prays on his own sometimes, and it just it increases my faith because I'm like, man, he can see the heart of God and he's yeah. only three. And I'm like, man, these youth, when they teach in front of others, they're doing something that most adults can't even do. Yeah. And they can reach people we can't. And so rather than dismissing them, it's like, why don't we give them the opportunity and start them while they're young rather than saying, oh, you're not old enough yet. Right. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. And you remember those things when you're young, when mm -hmm. you've had those opportunities. And yeah. Um, you know, I'm thinking as you guys are talking of these, these mentors who I think God has set apart for, for your ministry. Mm -hmm. He continues to bring awesome volunteers mm -hmm. yep. to your ministries. How have you seen their lives change just by uh, stepping up and, and doing that? Yeah, well, it's funny. This even just happened this weekend is I had a, a student that came in. They've been uh, struggling with some suicide and depressive thoughts. And one of my female leaders just happened to walk in the room at the right time. And 
just sat down and immediately her heart was for this student. Yeah. Um, and I was thankful she was there and, yeah. and she's praying about uh, going forward and, and, and mentoring them and things like that. But it's just to see their heart be like, man, like this is a passion that God has given me. This is something God has trusted me with. Like I always tell the youth, hey, God trusted you with your parents and he trusted you to live your life. And so when God places someone or something in front of us that he's trusted us to, we shouldn't take that for granted. He trusted them with that. He didn't trust Tyler with that. He didn't trust him with that. He didn't trust Dan Johnson with that. It's like, this is the person in your life, whether they're a pain to you or not, (laughs) that God has trusted you to be a part of. And he's done that for a reason. And my leaders, like they've, they've seen that and they've Mm. grown and they take ownership of it. And like, I've had leaders cry over kids and just like the desire, they have passion to teach them. Um, Like I have a leader who just includes the kids on his own family plans and, Mm. um, it makes it easy for him. It's like, Hey, I'm taking my family out to the zoo. Do you want to come with me? And he, the kid, the youth gets to see a God loving family live out their life. Right. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yeah, I, well, I've raised up a few leaders here and there, and I don't like to raise up leaders because they usually steal them from me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, that's <laughs> they true. stole Tyler. No, yeah. uh, <laughs> but no, uh, I, I, I love the leaders that I do have. They are willing to go all out for the the students. Yeah, but I feel you know maybe I'm pressing on this point too much, but sometimes they can be overtaxed because. There's, mm-hmm. there, we probably each need another 10 to 15 leaders. Yeah, at least. Yeah. We can never have too many leaders yeah, yeah. Uh, for these students. Uh, it's it's awesome when we get uh, leaders that are excited to be there mm-hmm. with the kids. And the kids and the students, I can't say kids, but the students really, really are simple. Like I had a student mm-hmm. come back to church because I knew her name the second time she came in. That's cool. And her mom wrote me an email saying, you know what, the reason she wants to be there is because you knew her name. And I was like, man, just to think about how simple that was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Okay, I I love that. Let me add to that then. And that's what I love about scripture is Christ is like, if you even so much as give a child a glass of cold water in the name of a disciple, you you have treasure in heaven. Mm That that's it exactly. Remembering their name. Yeah. Um, and a cup of cold water in that day would probably be one fresh from the well, right? Because it's not cold long in the desert. And acknowledging them. That's what that mm-hmm. cup of cold water does. Yeah. And it's what was so really simple. Uh, you know, most people or most adults that come to my room at first, they're petrified. They're mm-hmm. scared of the students like the students are going to attack them or the room's going to get crazy or whatever. Yeah, I don't know what sure. they're thinking. It does but happen. They're afraid. It, it, it does. Be afraid. No, not often. Uh, <laughs> but, be very afraid. But, yeah. You know, like I tell them, the one thing that the students want to talk about more than anything else is themselves. Mm-hmm. And it's yep. one of those things that once you see a student, you, you start asking them a few questions. You can ask question after question after question, and they yeah. will keep talking. They will keep the conversation going yeah. it's like it's not as difficult as most adults make it yeah or or as awkward mm-hmm. yeah sometimes i think we're listening to the fear and we're giving it a little too much credit yeah because it's really not and um that voice in our head that says we're not qualified yeah and it stops us from going or i have nothing to say to any of the students nothing to offer yeah like, mm-hmm. like i'm yeah. too old for that no yeah, let it, me tell you if anybody's <laughs> old in the room here like to do youth ministry it's me yeah like i should not be doing youth ministry as old as i am but god's mm-hmm. called me so i'm yeah. gonna go yep mm-hmm. amen well that's awesome guys super mm-hmm. encouraging and uh we'll continue to you know reach out and challenge the church get involved don't miss out on the joy of that involvement mm-hmm. Uh, don't miss out on being on the front lines and the battle. But God will use you. God will pour h- through his spirit. It isn't you. It's mm-hmm. just, you know, uh, the first time I ever volunteered in any evangelistic sense whatsoever, I showed up and the guy saw I was super nervous. I think it was, yeah, it was a long time ago. And he looked at me and he said, you know what, Dan, don't worry about it. 95% of evangelism is showing up. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Okay, great. I think uh, the Holy Spirit is mm-hmm. well well equipped to handle the other five percent. Yeah. And so, just to say that to your volunteers, ninety five percent of it is just show up and let the Holy Spirit 
do the rest. Amen. Yeah. Yep. Well, on to the next thing then, guys. How can the church support you outside of just showing up and mentoring? Uh, what are some things for the church to get behind you guys? Yeah, I'll, just kind of thinking on my type of things, I mean, our leaders, they do so much as it is, and, and they really work hard on that. But if there is ever something where it's like, hey, you know what, we have some cookies. Do you just want to give these to your youth? There's ways to love on them that way. Mm. Or just being willing uh, to think about creative ways that they can come That's alongside. Cool. Like, we always need event help. And if there's ever parents that come alongside and they're like, hey, can I just set this event up for you? Can I just serve food for you? And part of that is still showing the student that that's there. Um, but a good portion of it is uh, the discipleship and the mentorship, and part of that's just through them living their life around the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, like Tyler said, coming in and helping at a youth event, you know, mm -hmm. so often we just need that extra hand yeah. to set up, clean up. I had a gentleman show up all summer long for our youth night, and he set up every every time we had it he set up and every time uh when we went into worship or service he would break everything down and clean up and to just focus on ministry was awesome mm -hmm. it was it was a pleasure just to be so able to great. focus on that so great yeah yeah, yeah like i know one That's of the cool. things that i've talked to tim about if you ever have the free time and you want to help us out administratively and with planning let us know. Send us an email. Um, I'll give you as much administrative work as you desire. Cool. And that and could help so too. There's so many who have yep. that gifting. Yeah. Well, awesome. Um, I want. I know you have an event coming up. After we talk about this event, uh, I just want the audience to get a preview. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk to Tim about an event that, uh, if it's okay, really um, changed your life. Oh, okay. In powerful yeah. ways. Um, if I could, I'd love to introduce that event because that cool. was a fun okay. night awesome. for me, right. too. <laughs> that was a fun night for a lot of people. Um, I guess we're going to get into this. I haven't got into, into this in a long time. so. Well, that'll be our closing is to just really hear hear mm -hmm. what God did there. But, uh, Tyler, would you share start sharing about the event you have planned? Yeah, absolutely. So over the last year, what God has put on our heart, obviously, from hearing it today, it's just really youth discipleship, mm -hmm. giving them opportunities to lead and to grow. And one of the big things is allowing them to lead, allowing them to take ownership of the youth group and just kind of shepherding them and guiding them in that, but really cool. giving them ownership. And so last year, uh, one of the goals that I had written down in my review is I wanted to go to a youth conference. I hadn't done it. I wanted to go through specifically a youth pastor or leader conference. So yeah, that so we, we could, could get be, fed. Yeah, so we yeah, could get fed. Yeah, awesome. So I got an email. I saw one that said Youth Leadership Conference. And I was like, sweet. We can do this one. And we signed up for it. It was in Des Moines, Iowa. Yeah. Beautiful Des Moines, no, like Iowa. That's one awesome. star <laughs> maybe out of ten up. Iowa is not, no offense to Iowa, it's just not very pretty. <laughs> wow, wow. It was like negative 20 it. degree wind chill. But okay. we fly out there, we show up, Send we go your bad to comments it. To yeah. Tyler. <laughs> so, uh, you yeah. can. It's all right. I'm a Badger <laughs> okay. fan, so that's You're part fine. of it. Oh, boy. Here we oh, go, man. Here um, we go. Yeah. But we fly out there and we go to this church that's supposed to host the event and we show up. And I was like, man, this place is packed. There's a lot of youth leaders here. This is okay. incredible. Yeah. And we walk inside and there's like 2,000 youth all over. Yeah. Junior high, high school, just running around the church, okay. getting ready. And I was I like. I think what was crazy is me and Tyler were, you know, we got mm -hmm. there early. We got yeah. everything, all the swag and <laughs> yeah, everything yeah. we needed. And I was like, let's go to the front. Let's get us a good seat. Yeah. And all of a sudden we got us a good seat. And then all of a sudden a youth group would come like 50 kids and they'd be like, hey, can we steal some of these seats and we were like okay we'll move back yeah so you can have this row <laughs> yeah, and that yeah. row before you know it me and tyler are in the back of the room because there's just two thousand youth that keep coming in and we're just like well we got to keep giving up space there's only yeah. the two of yeah, us yeah. so we didn't even have a chair on day two yeah we actually stood near the exit Whoa, door but wow. the cool thing about this is at first we we're like oh no we've signed up for a youth conference yeah, for yeah. youth but what was so cool about it is it was for both youth leaders Cool. pastors and youth cool. and they had main sessions and breakouts tailored to both awesome and while we were there god put it on both our hearts at the same time we looked around it and we we're like we don't have anything like this in colorado 
We don't have anything that tailors specifically to the youth leading and this coming forward. Um, and not just for big churches either, but for small churches. And so we're yeah. like, well, we got to talk to the guy that puts this on. We need to try to do something like this um, in Colorado. Can we do that? And so we talked. His name's Jonathan Meyer. He's uh, the youth pastor at Grace Church. And he's been a youth pastor for like 19 years, cool. which is pretty unheard of uh, just because yeah. like most people uh, just don't make it that long in, in the youth. Um, it's just a reality that's there. Yeah. Um, but we were talking to him and you're we like, Hey, we want to see how we can do this. We wanted to pick your brain. Could we talk to you sometime? And of course he's super busy right now running <laughs> this conference yeah. and speaking at and it and speaking at it and doing his own breakout session. And he just stops and he's like, I've been praying about coming to Colorado. Okay. And that was specifically That's on his heart. Cool. And what was cool about it yeah. is on his heart, what he realized, and he actually told us a story a few weeks ago is when he was younger um, he was a youth pastor at a smaller church and a lady came up to him and asked him like, Hey, if you have one kid get saved, who's going to disciple him? And he mm. goes, Oh, well, well I am. And yeah. she says, okay, what about three? And he's like, okay, I can do that. And she goes, what about 10? And he's like, he said, he said yes. And then yeah. realized <laughs> after that probably didn't yeah. make sense. And he's like, okay, let's say he does a move and it's a hundred. Who's going to disciple them. Mm. And what God really put on his heart was who's going to disciple and help these youth grow. Mm hmm and, and I think that was that was really huge because when it, he came to the realization that he couldn't do it, that he couldn't mm -hmm. disciple a uh, hundred kids or fifty kids or twenty kids, like we just don't have that kind of time. Yeah, he said, "I'm going to take this to my elder board, and mm -hmm. I'm going to ask them the question. Yeah, the same question this lady asked me. And before you know it, the church was saw that they could mm -hmm. not handle what the youth." how many youth were there yeah. and if they all wanted to be discipled, they couldn't handle it. Yeah. And they need to change some things. Yeah. Mm. And the same is true here at RMC. Like we have two very healthy youth groups. We have, um, at least a hundred kids that come a week, if not more for both of us, um, individually. And we can't do that. Right. We need people to come along aside and disciple them. And part of what this does is it teaches the youth not only mm. um, how to be united, how to move forward um, in what Christ is doing in their life, to operate in their schools and out of their school and in their youth group, but also how to disciple younger youth as well. That's cool. And so what's really on our heart, um, both for the spring and starting our own youth discipleship program, but also hosting the Ignite Conference um, in uh, March 24th and 25th, is really promoting this culture of discipleship, promoting this opportunity to reach out and have the youth sustain their youth group, to have them be discipled and led and cared for Cool. and making sure we give them an opportunity to do that. Like one of the things Tim used to tell me when I was a leader under him was we need to let the youth have an opportunity to fail. Yeah, I believe two things about that, that when we allow them the opportunity mm -hmm. to succeed or fail, it's a time for them to learn. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's a time for them to grow. And what better place for you to fail than church? Yeah. yeah. I That's mean, right. church should be a safe place where you can come in and be yeah. taught and then fail a little bit and then picked back up Yeah, yeah. and to get back on the path and just say, okay, yeah. we learned a lesson here. Let's go forward. That's right. And I'll, I'll give you an example of it. We just had mission trip training for our trip down to Mexico here in a few weeks. And one of the things I made the students do, the leaders were not allowed to help. I gave them a budget. I sent them to the store. They had to provide lunch for everybody. Wow. And we ate mayonnaise sandwiches. Yeah. That's what we ate. There was hey, no plates, they make, no they floor. Make, they make a oh. few mistakes, but like I always <laughs> tell them, that's a first world problem. Yep. Right, it right. is not a problem that's going to kill yep. you. Mm -hmm. I know I used to do that with my student leaders, let them go buy lunch, come mm -hmm. back. And one time I had pot, a soda mm -hmm. and chips on the table. And I said, I want it sitting right here on this table. And mm -hmm. the first thing they bought was soda and chips. Yeah. Yep. It was yeah. like, that. that's okay. That's a, it's yeah. no big deal. <laughs> yeah. But it teaches them so much that's and right. they can see it. And we were able to just relate it be like, okay, so think about that and what God's entrusted you with. Yeah. Are you looking to him for your resource and for your counsel? Or are you going for it on your own? And that's really what this conference is about, is giving resources to youth groups and to students to be able to promote that forward and to reach out around them. And that's where we need the help of the church as well. 
Okay. Um, in January, we're going to launch just a volunteer application for it. And we're going to need between 100 to 200 volunteers. Okay. And kind of what we were talking about, if you want to get involved, you're like, hey, maybe I can't do small groups on Wednesday night, but maybe this one weekend in March. Yeah, special event involved. Yeah, I can yeah. come set up rooms for you guys or tear them down or make sandwiches. We're going to need to make like 2,000 sandwiches. Cool. So and, it launches in January. Mm -hmm. And then the dates again for it? March 24th and 25th. Yep. And we're hosting it here. Yeah, it's going to be here at RMC. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're praying for 1,800 students to come. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have some host churches that the students will be able to stay with. Cool. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to uh, just make this open to uh, all the small churches. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, Tim, we have a couple minutes left, but I just really wanted to hear... Um, um, Tyler, if you would intro yeah. this for us. So right as I took over as junior high pastor, first big event we had was back to school night. Get everything planned. It's going really well. We're getting ready to move outside and Tim has a heart attack <laughs> Tim has during heart the middle of the event. And so it was like first experience, first big event Not as planned. junior high pastor Not and planned. Tim dies on me. Yeah. Yeah. And I just remember I was talking to Eric. I had to call the big boss that night and I was like, hey, uh, so Tim is dying. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Could use some help here. Yeah. And it, I mean, fortunately, as you can see, he's still alive. But I just remember it started off as a really hard night and turned into something amazing that God used it for. For sure. Yeah. You know, uh, it was just a normal night for me. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I went to set up doing the last couple of things, went outside, talked to the kids, came back in. Kind of was just, I wasn't feeling off, wasn't feeling bad or anything. And just started talking to one of our other pastors, Sean, hmm. that had begged me hmm. to come in and be part of it. And I said, sure, come in. <laughs> and funny. just so happened that when I was talking to him, uh, just pretty much my heart stopped, fell into his arms. He put me down on the ground. He thought I was having a seizure. Um, and then found out my heart had stopped wow. and did CPR for a, a few minutes on me. Paramedics came, they did CPR on me, uh, shocked me seven times. Um, and then uh, I didn't really have any full consciousness mm -hmm. until the next morning at eight in the morning. And uh, I saw my daughters walk in the emergency or walk in the, in the hospital room and I had realized uh, that the nightmare that I was having while I was unconscious uh, was actually yeah, real life. It was real. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And uh, God just showed me so many things. He showed me a really a passion for his word. Mm. And I brought that back to the youth group. But then also I brought it back in a way that was negative. It, was, it wasn't received. I was really hard on the kids. God really had to like remold my heart, but I knew like the the time that I had was short and I wanted to just mm. press in so hard mm -hmm. that I think some of the youth ran because I was just on fire so much. Yeah. And I I had to learn how to balance that with the love of God. Mm -hmm. Cool. And to balance that with the love that Jesus has for us and and love the students through that. And God just has Change me to know that God's love comes first. The love of Jesus is first. And then, like, uh, me really leaning into them and knowing the intimate parts of their of their lives is like, that's what comes after I show them that I love them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They allow me to see, you know, the places where maybe they failed or where they've, uh, you know, where they've been struggling with and uh, the youth have grown since that time, like huge. They, you would not believe the stories that have come out of mm -hmm. me just showing them God's love and then them opening up and them revealing that, that they were struggling. And it wasn't, it's not just the kids that I thought were struggling. Huh. It was kids that I had known for years that were struggling yeah and they started to open up and the wall started to come down and our youth group started to get just better that's so great yeah well i think you know you it i i don't just think i know it was a miracle that you're here with mm -hmm. us that you're alive that god preserved you and kept you alive and i'm not surprised to hear you say at the end if i can just kind of put it paraphrase what you're saying is i'm here 
to share God's love and to love better, and you're loving more richly, and you're better. Both of you guys are loving rich in your ministries, and I just want to encourage the church, you guys, would you get involved? Jump into the front lines. Jump into the battle. Start with prayer. Every time you pray, you jump into the front lines. But uh, guys, thank you so much for your mm-hmm. heart for the kids and uh, the, these young uh, adults that you minister with in high school, and just praising God for you guys and, and your and your sacrificial love and keep it up. Church, let's pray for them and let's get behind the youth ministry and watch God reverse uh, what the what the enemy is trying to do in our culture. Amen to that. Mm-hmm. Amen. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.